Hi guys, welcome back to Fill My Cup Podcast. Thank you so much for listening in, and I hope that this brightens your Monday morning and that you just feel so seen and so loved by the Lord as you start your week to get an encouraging message about a testimony of what God has done in people's life all over the United States. And so I'm currently so excited about this one because I'm here with the president of my university, Southeastern University, which is the university I chose to attend after giving my heart to the Lord my junior year of of high school and this has been such an encouragement in my walk with the Lord that it has changed the trajectory of my life and so fortunately thanks be to God that the president of the university Dr. Kent Engel came on and he is here to share his testimony and encourage you guys because my age range is typically people that are in high school to college Uh, It ranges everywhere, but typically high school to college. So if you're looking for a place to call home for your next steps for your university, Southeastern is an amazing place to be. So Dr. Kent Engel, you would love to say hi. Hey, well, great to be with you, Tristan. Thank you for your kind invitation. And and it's wonderful to be able to have a a conversation with a a student of Southeastern. and, And yeah, so I've been looking forward to this opportunity. So again, thank you. And thank you for being here. It means a lot. I wanted to ask your testimony and how you came to know the Lord and really serve Him. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm grateful that God placed me in a home. I was born into a family of faith, Mm -hmm. and so faith was always a part of our home life, part of our journey. Um, So I, I, I grew up in that. Obviously, there comes a point in time when Christ becomes real to you. You have knowledge of Christ, you go to church, but when you start to, you know, think about life and you get into that mode where you're, you know, starting to ask questions about life, that's when you really begin to think about your spirituality Hmm. and seeing it modeled in my parents' Uh, see it modeled in my grandparents and, and a lot of my family and their lives, you know, something I knew that I wanted to have in my life. So I sought after that. But I, I would say probably in junior high, to be honest, is when it really came to life for me. And that's when God kind of started to unlock, uh, at least in my awareness, some of the things that I think he put in my heart, passion, Um, gifts. um, And I believe even at that early age, you can start to figure those things out. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you discover that by things that you like, things that you enjoy, um, things that you're good at. Uh, Then of course you, you have a chance to see the people that are in your life and, and you learn and grow in those kinds of relationships and, and then the company you keep. And Mm -hmm. all of that has a lot to do with helping you kind of discover the way you're made. And I think early on, again, it was in junior high that I started to discover some of those passions. I loved communications. Uh, I loved sports. Uh, and, uh, and of course, I love to serve. And I remember even at, 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 in junior high, I would work in the children's ministry and, and I learned how to do ventriloquism. And wow. I, I, yeah, I, even, I had all of that. <laughs> I had a, a ventriloquist doll. I had all of that stuff that I would, you know, do Bible stories and things like that, because I just, I enjoyed that. First of all, uh, I remember what it was like as a kid to hear Bible stories <laughs> and how that came to life. And, and so for me to be able to do that, I enjoyed that. And mm-hmm. again, my heart was always, how can I um, encourage, help, support? That's just something that was wired in me. And again, I think mm-hmm. it comes from, you know, when you when you have a family that models that and teaches that, you see that, you see the difference that it makes in people's lives and just maybe want to be a part of that. I also remember early on um, in terms of my love of communications and sports kind of coming together, my family happened to be good friends with um, the Albert family, Al Albert. Um, and then, uh, his brother, most people know his brother, Marv Albert was a voice of the New York Knicks and Mm -hmm. also did NBA basketball. But Al was the voice of the Denver Nuggets. We happened to live in Denver for a short period of time. And, uh, we got to, you know, because of my family knowing them, uh, he invited me to come down and sit with him at Denver Nugget games and why he did, while he did broadcasting. And that's kind of when I first had my first awakening, I thought, man, this is two things that I love, sports, and I love basketball. Um, And then to look at how communications fits into that Mm -hmm. well as a broadcaster. And and even, and that was, I remember when I was like in seventh grade thinking, I'd love to do this someday, never knowing that 
God would open up a door, you know, um, seven, eight, nine years later wow. to be involved in that career, which was my first um, career in life was television sports. So, wow. um, yeah, so that's kind of my life. But but yeah, early on um, in junior high was when Christ became real to me, mm-hmm. what it means to have a relationship with him where I'm always aware, wanting to be aware of his presence, wanting to be aware of his word, wanting to be aware of ways that I can just grow in the kind of person that I am, uh, mm-hmm. uh, that I I have discovered is the way God made me and created me, which is so important for me. And of course, it's the mission of our university as well. But yes. uh, but yeah, so that's kind of uh, a thumbnail sketch, yes, of, so to speak. Paints of, the picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, of, uh, so life. what does it look like to you to really prioritize your relationship with God? Yeah, it's extremely important that it becomes part of my daily discipline. You know, we are... You can read throughout Scripture how important it is to be holistically healthy, Mm -hmm. um, mentally, physically, spiritually. I mean, God talks about that throughout Scripture, um, the importance of that, so that we can be in tune with the way God made us, Mm -hmm. created us, wired us, so we can ultimately fulfill and honor Him um, because when we are fulfilling our destiny, the destiny that he created for us, it just glorifies him and brings honor to him. And um, it's worship to him, which is Mm -hmm. why he created us. Um, So, yeah, I just feel like it's so important that that is part of your daily discipline, that you're Mm -hmm. cultivating self-awareness, how you're always making sure you're in God's will and, Mm -hmm. and doing what he wants you to do. And that you have to understand it changes how he yeah. wants to use you, how he, you know, and, and that's evident of my career, the different, you know, there's, I always like to say this, God puts a call on your life that lasts forever, but he'll change the roles in your life to fulfill that call. Hmm. So a lot of times people get confused that my role is my calling. No, your calling has to do with how he made you. Your role is how you get to use that right, design. Right. Um, and he's always going to change that. He'll change your passions. He'll change your gifts at times. He'll, you know, put different people in your pathway, different circumstances in the way he wants to use you in your design. But you ultimately have a design Mm -hmm. and it's a call that God places upon your life. And I think you want to make sure in self-awareness that you're fully aware of that. Uh, Self-management, which is making sure you have a model of spirituality, making sure that you, you are disciplined and and physical to be good and healthy. Um, Mm -hmm. Mentally, you're always learning and growing. And I mean, those are the things that help you to be what I call good steward of your life. Stewardship is when God gives you something, it is your responsibility to invest in that for the purpose of growth, for the purpose of health. And so that's why discovering your design is it's just a part of the stewardship Mm -hmm. of life so that you can fulfill the ultimate call that God's placed upon you. Right. And I love that you said that your calling isn't your role, because I'm thinking about in terms of you, for example, you're the president of Southeastern University. What happens if you're not the president of Southeastern University and you feel like God transitions you and something changes in your life? Are you no longer called? Do you just no longer have purpose and calling? No, you're so called by God. You're called to reach people and love people and point them to Jesus. It's just going to look different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, I've I've had, you know, uh, three careers in my life, Mm -hmm. three different types of roles. Um, But my calling has been the same throughout. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my first career, as I mentioned, was in television sports, did that for 10 years, thought that was going to be what I did forever. Mm -hmm. And um, again, God blessed me. He put favor on my life. He utilized those skills to, to where I was a success at that because I was faithful to that uh, role in my calling. And then what he does oftentimes is through uh, catalysts, through circumstance, through events, um, he begins to change or open up opportunity to maybe transition you to a new role. Mm -hmm. And I started um, sensing that uh, in my life after about 10 years uh, that, you know, God was 
now calling me into ministry leadership. Mm -hmm. And part of every time there's a transition, I always, uh, you know, ask God to make sure you confirm it in many ways so that I'm not missing anything or I'm not just conjuring this up because that's part of, again, your discipline. Yeah holistic um, drive in making sure you are obedient and faithful to God's call. Um, you know, I and, and I, I remember as I was transitioning, God, give me confirmation as ministry leadership really, you know, I know that I have passion for that. I want to serve. I want to help people um, uh, get close to, to, to Christ and, and understand what that kind of relationship means in life. Mm. Um, so I, I was excited, but I, I want to confirmate. And I remember, um, you know, I'm 10 years in. I've graduated, you know, 10 years ago and all of that stuff. And uh, my pastor, when I was in college, just calls me out of the blue and says, Kent, God's dealing with you about going into ministry. I love these stories. I'm confirming to you that that's what God is doing. Wow. And, you know, once again, that's the way God works. He He's going to make sure that if you are in tune and wanting to know mm -hmm. how God wants to use you, he's going to provide that confirmation. And, and even in that phone call, because he was in a position of ministry leadership um, to guide that. He said, I, I actually know a place that I know you and your wife would be great pastors for. Um, and the way you, and he, again, he used language like, I know your gifts, I know your passions, I know what you love to do, I know what you're good at. Mm -hmm. And this is a place that, you know, he, he began to talk about it in detail, you know, a place that was ready to close, a church that used to be a thriving church. And, and again, this is also a pattern that I see throughout my life. He always places me in, in leadership roles mm -hmm. that take things that either are dying, need rejuvenation, need growth, um, you know, need health brought to it. And as I see, even when I was a sportscaster, I started out in, in, in markets that were struggling, that needed, and wow. based on my love for innovation and creativity, it would create programming, you know, that mm -hmm. would help us to grow in the market. Yeah. Um, and uh, increase viewers and things like that. Um, and same thing now, I'm going into ministry leadership. Oh, I start to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. This is a church ready to close. It wasn't like a just an, a plant where you're starting something from scratch. It was something that used to have life, and now it was dying. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, directly called me to use a role that would allow me to bring life. And so we put together a great team, went into Northwest Los Angeles and replanted a church where I had the privilege to lead for 10 years. So another wow. 10 years. Wow. And then also pastored a, a church in the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. Same thing. It was a church that was dying and we could bring life to it. Um, and, and we saw significant fruit and growth um, out of both of those um, so again, showing how your role can change, but your your calling remains the same. Yes. And then and then it wasn't not too long later, and um, God through catalyst events because of my continued education, which is why education is so important. You know, if you if you're talking about life stewardship, if you're going to be a good steward, if you want to be the best that you can be in the way God's, you're going to need education. Mm -hmm. That's why education is so important because education fuels your role and it fuels your calling. So when I was in broadcasting, I had a, a, a broadcasting journalism degree. That's really all I needed. But when now I'm going into ministry leadership, I need more education, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. I went back and I, I uh, enrolled in a master's program that had the things that would be so important for a pastor to have. Mm -hmm. It had biblical studies. It had church history. Um, it had practical leadership, practical theology. And that enabled me to be the best pastor I could be. Mm -hmm. But I also am grateful because education opens doors of opportunity. Yeah. And as I continued education. I not only did my master's, but then I went on to do a doctorate in ministry because that was my role. Um, little did I know that it would open a door to be involved in higher 
Christian education. Mm. And so after about 15 years in leading churches, God began to, you know, change um, starting. I could see the role and and then out of the blue, God, you got to give me confirmation. And then out of the blue, I receive mm. a call from a of a, a president that I was aware of, um, that I knew, who I had great respect for. And he said, you know, Kent, uh, your name was given to us. We're looking for a new dean for our College of Ministry and Theology at Northwest University in Seattle. And we believe God has empowered you to be that leader because what we need, once again, you can see the, the, All the, the open pattern, doors. you can see, he said, we need to turn around our college of ministry. We're not teaching relevant curriculum. We have no partnerships with the local church like we should. Mm-hmm. And we believe because of your background, because of your leadership success, you could bring to the table those kinds of things that would help us to develop new curriculum in in higher education, faith-based higher education. You could help us to connect, to partner. And so... um so yeah, so out of it was a uh, it, again through those events and confirmation, we made the decision. Uh, family, we moved to Seattle, and mm-hmm. for the next six seven years, I served as the dean, which was my first role into higher education. Um, and every step of the way, I'm always thinking this is this is going to be it. I'm going to be in this for the rest of my life. Yes. You know, I never, I never have. And and here's the other thing I would encourage. Um, especially young students, you think you've got to go after that ultimate job Mm -hmm. and that's going to be it for the rest of your life. Don't ever think that. Um, God has a journey of a lifetime for you. He's going to use you in a variety of ways. You just need to make sure that you have a system in place to help you discern, discover, develop, uh, the way that he wants to utilize you and that you're ready for those moments. You're ready for those opportunities. You're ready to get more education so that you can be the best that God's called you to be. And so, yeah, did that. And and we did. We turned the entire college around. I think when I went there, there was probably 60 students in that particular college. And when I left to come to Southeastern, they had over 800 students. So it grew significantly. Again, mm-hmm. we saw the fruit of that because we made it relevant Mm -hmm. uh, to what ministry training, equipping, developing ministry leaders would be, what would be important for that. And then uh, again, uh, just out of the blue, this is the way God works. I never have gone after something. I've never sought something to reach a title, to reach a role, to reach. I've always just rested in what God had me for the moment and stayed in that. But then all of a sudden I get a phone call from Southeastern. We're looking for a new president. Your name uh, has been given to us. We want to talk with you. And then long story short, um, that's what God had. And uh, once again, utilizing uh, the way he created me, my calling to bring the right things to this university. And, And again, the pattern, I said, tell me more about the university. Well, it's a university that's been growing, but they've gone two years without a president. Uh, They've declined now. They're starting to go down. Um, They need transformational leadership and Mm -hmm. growth and um, uh, to bring back health. Same MO. Every, you know, I, I can see my calling's the same. The role changes but what we are to accomplish and how God wants to use me is always this kind of the same thread. Yeah. And so now I've been here 13 years um, to see this university flourish has been amazing. And I've just been able to come and kind of bring vision, but it's been great to see the people that he brings alongside you to, to bring the growth and health. And so grateful that I've had the privilege to serve with an amazing team here. When we started, the university was at about 20, 22, 2300 students. And we set an enrollment record this year, 10,534. Wow. Um, and we just continue to grow and flourish and God's been good, but that's kind of the, the journey of my life when it, again, uh, focuses, concentrates, confirms that, yes, God has a calling right. that never changes, but he's always going to change roles during your life. The other thing that I think it's evident 
is you can rest assured God's going to put you where he wants you. Yes. Uh, but you have to be, you have to avail yourself, and that's where your discipline comes in, to make sure you recognize when he's doing that mm-hmm. and that you're seeking every day of your life, God, just make sure I can discern, you know, um, what you want and how mm-hmm. you want to use me. I do that every day when I get up. God, um, I'm going to give you this day. I want to discern every conversation I have, every um you know, relationship I have, every task I have, that I am making sure I'm doing everything you want me to do in my calling as well as in my role. Wow. I think in terms of knowing your calling and knowing what to do, and I think a lot of high school and college students wrestle with this question of what do I do when I don't know what to do? Like, where do I start when I don't know where to start? And how could you encourage students in that that are navigating this next season of their life to figure out what they want to do with their life and what they're called to? Yeah, and I'm grateful I had a mentor that did just what you're asking um, in high school. And he was my pastor, um, and I'm so grateful that I I went to a church where the pastor truly cared about every generation within Mm. that church. Um, And I I remember one Sunday, he said, Kent, I've I've watched you, I've observed you, I see these gifts in you, um, and I think God wants to— use you. And so that's one thing I always say to people, make sure you pay attention to the people God puts in your life, because that's one way God will confirm and affirm how he's called you and how he wants to use you. And he he said, I'd like to ask your parents um, if maybe one day of the week you could come down after school and spend a couple of hours, and I'm going to show you what it's like to lead a church. Wow. Didn't know, you know, in high school, um, that, you know, 15, 20 years down the road, I would become a pastor. Just like you that, know? God opened and, those doors and, and aligned And it. I needed that even at that young age. Again, God's going to put you through experiences and things that you have no idea, maybe way down in your life, he's going to use you at. And that's why you also be mindful of that. But wow. he taught me, he said, follow, and this is what our mission is here at Southeastern. Mm-hmm. If you follow your design... You will never miss God's will for your life. Mm. You'll never have to be afraid that you're missing it. Um, Even if you're trying and maybe you make a choice that's not exactly what God had in mind, but the fact that you are wanting exactly what Mm. God has in mind, he's going to navigate that. So I always say you can't make a wrong move if Mm. you're being intentional in every day saying, God, I want to follow your design for my life. Help Mm -hmm. me to continue to develop it, to grow it. And he said, here's some indications of your design. You know, uh, what are you passionate about? Yeah. You know, kind of look at what what are things that you just love to do. And you lose, the way I say it is, you lose track of time when you do it. You Mm -hmm. know, you you don't go, oh, do I have to do this again? And how long do I have to do that? That's not going to, that's not a really a passion, mm. but if you say, man, I, I can't wait till I do this again. And, and that's a passion. Mm. You look at that, look at uh, your gifts. And there's one of the ways to do that is, you know, there are all kinds of gift tests that you can take. Yeah. I try to do that once a year um, just to see maybe God is shifting yeah, gifts. Something shifting. Yeah, yeah. That now he has put on your life that you seem to be good at and you need to recognize that and follow in that. Mm-hmm. So gifts, I think another thing are experiences. Build into your daily life reflection about all the experiences you're going to. What are good experiences? What are difficult experiences? What are spiritual experiences? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what are things that you're experiencing that can speak to what's going on? Mm-hmm. You have to remember... Not all life is going to be incredible, rosy, fun in this life. Yeah, in this life, God says you're gonna you're gonna have some struggles. You're gonna, but thankfully, I've overcome the world for you, and and you can you're gonna do the same. You know, we're gonna have those, but recognize from that, learn from those, Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times, until you go through something, you can't know how to. If it's in ministry, minister to someone who's going mm-hmm. to that, going through that, or yeah, there's just a variety of reasons why you want to make sure that you're fully aware of why you're going through what you're going through. Mm-hmm. Celebrate, grow through them. Um, you know, look at it as great opportunity because 
it ultimately is going to unfold how God's going to use you. Mm. So you look at experiences and, and recognize those. You look at the people God's putting in your life, the conversations that you're having. Again, all those things help you to make sure you're discovering and developing your design. And remember, it's not just a one and done thing. Yeah. It's a constant. Um, it's a constant thing. When you're in college, when you're in high school, you're just starting out really in many ways, discovering that and developing that. And I, I say your college years, your high school years are great times to experiment. Maybe you don't know. And, and the best way to do that is kind of step out and get involved in something. See if that's something you enjoy. Maybe you get involved in something and you realize, mm, I, nah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, all of that, but follow your design. So I know if I'm following my design, when I get phone calls, mm -hmm. when opportunities come, it helps me to say, no, I don't, I, I don't think that's right for me right. because I know what I, I know where I'm at. Or you go, wow, maybe this is something God's doing because I've been sensing mm. this or, you know, so again, um, I think the bottom line is creating an intentional pathway always to making sure you're developing and discovering your design so mm -hmm. that you can solidify, continue to solidify your calling, but more importantly, make sure you're you're going to be able to say yes to the roles that mm -hmm. God brings your way to fulfill those calls. Right. What would you say your top three like gifts and skills are? Oh my goodness. Um, I, well, one is definitely um, leadership. leadership. Yes. I love <laughs> leadership. There's no, no uh, doubt about that. Um, I love to take things and grow things. Um, I think another gift is encouragement. Mm -hmm. There's no greater joy in my life than when I get to come alongside someone, helping them to discover who they are, helping them to be better, mm -hmm. um, helping them to grow, um, and then helping them, you know, just enjoy life. I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those saps that, uh, cry at all of those, uh, you know, movies that are so nice and kind wow, and, really? you know, all the Hallmark movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there and heart. I'm sobbing and I'm going, Oh, you know, why, <laughs> why do I, I do I this all the time? It's because my heart is, I, I just, I love it when people Aww. get happy and good things happen to them. And, and if I can hmm. do that, I always want to do that. Another thing Part of that is I, I just want to be others oriented. Yeah. You know, it's always about other people. And in fact, that's what leadership really is. Mm -hmm. It's others oriented. You, you're you not thinking about yourself, but you're always thinking about other people in your life that you can, man, you can help and encourage and support. So I think those are significant, you know, gifts mm -hmm. that God's blessed me with that I've you know, he's helped me to utilize in my calling and, and, and in the roles that he's given to me. Right. And I think when you touch on leadership and you say that it's about others and being others oriented and also that idea that Jesus models for us of being servant leaders. And I think that there's people that will be listening to this that are like, I want to be a leader. I feel called to be a leader, but I don't know how to lead and how can I grow my leadership skills? And I know that's something you're passionate about and you're good at. So how could you help us to navigate how to grow into a role of being a leader? Yeah, I think, um, I think first and forward, make sure you get a mentoring leader yes. in your life. Um, you know, I, I try to go after people that are in roles or places where I'd love to, if I'm sensing that's what God wants me to do, um, that they are people in those roles mm -hmm. that they can, you know, and again, I go back to I had the privilege to be mentored by a pastor. Um, I served in, in, as an intern in sports television for several months before I actually got into the job. I had a mentor teach me some of the things that would be important in that role. Right. Obviously, my undergrad helped me in that role. Um, Education is important if you feel this is what you're passionate about and, and get the right education that can fuel that. Um, so mentors, education will help solidify that. And then I think just continued curiosity about these things that you're sensing and and just learning in every which way from, you know, reading to, you know, all of that. It, all those kinds of things mm -hmm. help you in that process. Yeah. I think for me, it's so interesting hearing you talk through this because memories are coming back to mind from when you would talk about when you were younger and passions that you've always had with you. I remember when I was maybe seven or eight and I was sitting with my grandma 
And I always loved people. I always loved to talk to people, to go and ask them questions and run up, and everyone became my new best friend. And my grandma sat with me, and she was like, you're going to be in broadcast journalism one day. Uh-huh. And I was like, Grandma, like, that's not my thing to, like, interview and talk with people like that. I just want to be, like, their friend. She's like, you're going to figure out a way, and you're going to be in broadcast journalism. I see it. And up until recently, uh, being at Southeastern, growing in my giftings and my talents and recognizing what I'm passionate about talking about, which is the Lord, and hearing testimonies, is how I've recognized that that talent and that gift I've always had from when I was a child always stuck with me and just God allowed that to develop. He allowed it to come from, though, like you were saying, this others-oriented approach that it's not just here, welcome to my show and let me talk about me, but let me talk to other people, hear their stories, and just get to journal, be a journalist for other people and what God is doing in their life. So it stuck with me from when I was a kid. And that just reminds me of what you were talking about from when you were younger and those passions that you had. Today's episode of Fill My Cup is being sponsored by Carmela Coffee Shop at Park Place Plaza. You can stop in at this select location and use code FMC10 for a 10% discount. This upcoming season, they're offering pumpkin spice and other seasonal flavors. And for an extra boost of joy, you can even show them a custom design and make your own personal latte art. Be sure to fill your favorite mug with Carmela coffee and listen in every Monday morning at 8 a.m. for a new uplifting and life-giving message. But in terms of other people and reaching them and helping them to find who they are and what they're called to do, what would be your encouragement to them specifically in building their relationship with God and then trusting that he does have a plan even when they don't know what that plan could look like? Yeah, I think that's uh, it comes out of your model of spirituality. Yeah. Um, how do I learn more about God? Well, that comes from scripture, that comes from reading, that comes from studying. Um, how can I... Um, listen to God. That comes from your prayer life, your reflection, um, those kinds of things. So it's building discipline in your life that has those, you know, that your spirituality model Mm -hmm. encompasses. So making sure, basically what I'm saying is making sure you have time of prayer and have time of reflection and have time of reading scripture, have time of reading authors who help you to learn and discover biblical Mm -hmm. truth and principles that apply. I mean, one of my favorite books is Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster, which talks about the disciplines um, that you do need in your life so that you can be in tune with what God has for you. Um, You know, so you you, you take things like that to Mm -hmm. build your model. And if you will, if you will create that model, you'll be ahead of the game rather than oh, I guess I should do this, or I better do this. No, you actually are building that into your everyday life. And it just becomes natural. Just like like you get up and and take a shower and brush your teeth. I hope everybody does that. Yeah, you know, I mean, those are just normal things we do every day. Well, it's the same thing with your model of spirituality. These are just everything, everyday things that I just naturally will do. Yep, you wake up, you pray, you seek the Lord. Like you said, every morning, God... What do you want me to do and guide my conversations? Right. And you touched on that idea, too, of having a mentor and how you had an amazing mentor in your life. And I've had those so many along the way for multiple different things and reasons in my life. But what are some qualities of a good mentor? Because this is huge. This is a key in my life that having a mentor guide me specifically in my faith, but then having mentors now in my career and having mentors in my education. What are some qualities of finding a good mentor? Well, I think I think first and foremost, somebody who's full of humility. Yes, so good. Um, and they they have a sense of others oriented that they're not bothered mm-hmm. um, that you want to learn from them or that they have the same heart. Yeah, I want I want to help you. I want to I want to teach you what I've always um, uh, you know said. As a leader, you're helping others to become more like Christ, obviously in a spiritual sense. Um, but it's not about you. Look, you come learn who I am. I remember when I started a master's program, the professor got up on the opening night and he said, you're trying to become one of us. You know, and it's that, you know, a mentor that has that. You know, mm-hmm. look at me like I'm great um, and I'm going to give you the privilege wow. to. No, a mentor is someone, man, I want to really help you to succeed. Yeah. And I'm honored. So there's that humility level there. I think you also want somebody who's had the experience. Mm-hmm. Again, 
in the things that you want to grow and learn in. Uh, they have not only the experience, they have the knowledge, mm-hmm. they have the wisdom um, that can provide. And again, it's somebody that relates, you want mentors that relate to where you need to go. I always say this in leadership, a question that every leader who, for example, leads an organization is how do I build a map to a place I've never been before? Mm. That can be applied organizationally as well as personally. Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to grow, which God calls us to grow, you're going to places you've never been before. Right. So I say that in terms of the qualities of a mentor. Are they at places you've never been before? That's so good. And you want to get there. So look for people who can help you get there. Don't go to a mentor that has nothing to do with your, you know, where you believe God's taking you. Find mentors that can continue to encourage you and help you to grow in those areas. So those are some of the qualities I think you want to look for in a a mentor. Yes, that's so good. And I I love that you said that. Finding someone who's been where you want to go. If I'm asking someone who's never been in this area of podcasting and I'm asking the hiker, help me grow my podcast, he has no idea how to help me. But if I go to people that have done podcasts and no production, they can mentor me in that. But who knows where their faith is at? So then you find someone who can mentor you in your faith and you find people in different areas of your life that can pour into you. Yeah. And that's what I've, I've done in every area of my life when I've changed a new role. You know, when I came here to Southeastern, I've never been a college president. Mm. Um, So I wanted a mentor at a place where I've never been, but also recognizing I want a mentor who was in a place like I was Mm. and created what I need to create. So I knew one president that, that, you know, took a university that was struggling Mm. um, and in decline, very much like I was about to to enter and lead, um, uh, President John Wallace of Azusa Pacific in California. And and he had taken a university and had significant growth. Um, when I approached him, I think the university when he started was like about four or 5,000. And when I approached him to be my mentor, that university was now about 14,000. Mm-hmm. So I knew he had been a significant leader in, in creating growth and health. So I just out of the blue called him and 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 said uh, I'm the new president at Southeastern. I've never been a president, but I would love to have a mentor like you and here's mm-hmm. why I think you would be great and in a very humble um, again in humility said man I'd be honored mm-hmm. to pour into you and encourage you and support you and and that's what he did. He um, he would come here you know, and, and, and then he invited me to go out there and, and our teams even got together. Um, when we launched the football program in early 2014, they had launched a program under his football program. So we went out and learned from them on how they did. We learned what to do and and we also learned what not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, one of the things I'll, I'll never forget. He said, we learned early on what we should have done and we didn't we should have built a stadium right on our campus. Mm. So we said we listened to that, and we knew if we're going to launch this, we should f- build a stadium on our campus. That's why we built the stadium we, we have on, on uh, our campus, um, because it would help the program be successful. Mm. It creates culture. It creates spirit when, when it's right there. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's what... Um, what mentors do, who you need to look for in a mentor, and uh, what's their what's their posture. I mean, all of yeah. that. Yeah, and it sounds like so much of what you're saying has so much biblical backing behind it. Jesus was king of heaven, came down, stepped into humanity, and it says he didn't come to be served, but to serve. It says he came to serve humanity and wash the disciples' feet. And I think that oftentimes in leadership, it can get messy because it's like you were talking about the leader that's pointing down at you, but rather a leader should have their ceiling be your floor. Like, let me raise you up and pour into you to make you better than I am. But I think that causes an insecurity sometimes in insecure leaders that want them to be reprimanding and over the people they're pouring into to kind of assert their authority. But Jesus modeled serving is leading, serve the people right. that you love and yeah. lead from that. Yeah, and you so do that good. so well. Thank you. So, so thank you. And thank you for this university because just from a student to you, it's changed my life. And wow. 
I got saved when I was uh, 16, still in high school, and had some friendships just involved in partying and just not going down the, the route that I believe the Lord would have had me in. And I was seeking for a university to call home to really grow in my faith. And from the professors that have been here and the people that God has brought into my life before I came, I had a dream, actually, a couple months before coming to SE my freshman year a few years ago. And in the dream, I lost a lot of my friends in real life because I was taking this route to follow God. And that can kind of cause some problems and friendships that aren't following the Lord. And when that happened, I lost some of those friends and I was just feeling lonely and like, Jesus, I know that you're enough and I know you're the friend that's closer than a brother, but I'm just feeling like I need some community. Like, can you bring some people to my life? And that being said, a few months before coming to SEU, I had a dream of a bunch of girls surrounding me and they just grabbed my hands and we were running and we were doing all these activities and it was at Southeastern University. And I just know that dream had to have been from the Lord because it's so accurate to what's happened in my life. So thank you for this school and this university, and it's blessed me, and I'm sure tons of people that are here as well. Well, Tristan, we're grateful that you're here and privileged to come alongside you and and know that, you know, God has a, an incredible journey for you, and he's going to use you in a powerful way. It's evident just even in this conversation, you know, your love, your passions, your gifts, and uh, it's going to be a significant journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so for everyone watching, I hope that this was an encouragement to you. And if anything that Dr. Kent Engel has said really spoke to you or a phrase that he said or anything that really touched your heart, please comment that down below. And if you're watching on YouTube, just comment that and let us know. You could reach out to the school directly. Uh, send me a DM at fillmycup.podcast on Instagram or my personal Instagram at tristan.tice. But we would love to be a part of that with you and just get to know the ways that God has impacted your life through this. And uh, Dr. Kent Engel, if you would be willing to just pray over the people that are watching this, that if they're struggling with knowing their purpose or knowing what they're, what am I made for? What am I doing here on this big earth? Like, what am I called to do? that you would just pray for the Lord to speak to them and give them a confidence yeah, assured. Absolutely. Gracious Father, we are grateful for the life that you've given all of us, those that are watching, uh, those that are listening, and, and they're in the process of learning and discovering uh, what that is, that you would just help continue to unfold that in their life. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are good. They're, they're full of hope. Um, and I just pray that they would sense that, know that. I pray that Ephesians 2.10 would come to life in their hearts and their lives, that they are a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. Why? To do incredible works, which he prepared long ago. We even know how long ago. Psalm 139 tells us in our mother's womb, we were knitted together. Uh, and, and every day of our life created before we even took our first breath. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image to go forth and fulfill a destiny. So I pray that you would just continue to unlock that design and destiny in every person's life. Uh, those that are listening, that uh, this will just continue to solidify what you're doing in their lives. It'll be a source of encouragement. And then I pray for all of us that we will do what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, never leaning on our own understanding, but acknowledging you. And it is clear the promise that you will direct our paths when we do so. So I pray that blessing upon every person, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, guys, I hope that this was an encouragement to you. I hope that there is something that you took away and that the Lord would even begin to speak, if not right now through this video or through this podcast that you're listening in on, that over the next course of the few days that you're just pressing into knowing God's will for your life, that he would speak to you. And I'm just believing in full faith that he will, that he is not withholding anything good from you, but he has good plans to prosper you and not to harm you for those that love him and just grow your relationship with God, put him first, actually apply some things that Dr. Kent Engel has been sharing with you about finding a mentor, finding people in your life and community that encourage and call out the giftings and the callings that you have. And so thank you for listening in. I hope that this was an encouragement to you and I'll see you again next week. Bye.